do it. Hey guys, this is Versatile from Project Phoenix Media. So this is a newer PS3 modded tutorial. I'm going to show you how to play PS2 games on Rebug 4.76 and higher. In my previous PS2 on PS3 tutorial, I showed you the old method that used PS2 classics. Well, guess what? You don't have to do that anymore. And there's a simpler method. And I'll show you how to make your PS2 save games work as well. So what you want to do is go ahead, put in your PS2 disc inside your PS3. That's modded. So and, and go ahead and log into your local account. And then if you want to follow along, let's just go ahead and go into the Rebug Toolbox and just verify some basic settings. I'm using 4.80.1 DEX, but this method has also worked for the KEX version as well. Okay, so system information, we see that I'm DEX and DEX, that's good. If we go to selector over here, we see that my system mode is Rebug, um, Cobra mode is enabled, PS2 emulator is on Cobra, and Webman is also enabled. And then that's pretty much it. And let's go back to the main menu here. So I'm going to go back and quit the Rebug Toolbox. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go into Multiman. So if you don't have Multiman, go ahead and install it. You can get that package file from the store.brewology.com website, for example, and install that. So let's go ahead, log into Multiman. And we want to be in the MMCM mode. And once we're in that particular mode, then we can go ahead and do something which is called create an ISO. And let me show you how that works. It's really simple. Okay, so what we're going to do is go over to game. Like I said, I already inserted my disk. We're going to use time splitters, future perfect as an example. So go ahead, press triangle, and say create ISO. And then it's going to go ahead, say uh, yes or X, and it's going to create an ISO and save it on the internal PS3 hard drive under the PS2 ISO folder. It's going to make a bin file. Well, I took that back, sorry. It's going to make a Q file, an ISO file, and also a JPEG or cover art file as well if it can detect the cover art. And then this is going to take a while. Depending on the game, you're going to rip. This particular game is going to take about 17 minutes approximately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video. Once it's done, then we're going to continue to the next step and have a lot of good times. Let's do this. All right, so we're back. So the PS2 rip is completed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to quit. Um, actually, let's just restart the system and I'll explain why we want to do that. I think it's optional. And at this point in time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and eject the disk as well. So wait for it to reboot and then I'm going to eject my PS2 disk. So there's no discrepancies when I try to load my game through Webman. So why did I say reboot the PS3? Only because it just re removes one less hassle step for Webman to detect your games, basically. The other method is, of course, going to Webman and just refresh the HTML and XML um, document or buttons, basically. So, let me show you how that works, if, that, if you want to do that method. So, we're going to go ahead, we're going to log into my local account here. If we go to Webman, we go to uh, Webman Games, go to PlayStation 2, we see that, hey, something happened and my game's not detected. I thought the restart was going to fix it. It didn't, so not a problem. Let's go to Webman Setup, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to Refresh XML, and then also Refresh HTML as well. All right, cool. So now we go here. Here's my game. I'm going to press X and load the time splitters, and we'll notice that it's going to be loaded as an ISO. We're going to see a golden disk, basically, and here it is. Now, before we run the game, let's go ahead and make sure we have a PS2 virtual memory card created. So we go to Memory Card Utility. We go to create new internal memory card. I'm going to say internal memory card PS2. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to update this name. Call it something more descriptive. I'll just add PS2 to the end of it. And we're good to go. Press OK. And we're good. All right, cool. It's assigned to slot 1. Excellent. Let's go ahead and start the game. And what's awesome about this solution is the save games work, the virtual memory card works, and your PS3 controller will also work through wireless, no need for a USB cable to sync it like in the old video tutorial I've done in the past. So here's my controller, it's blinking, but here we are, synced, awesome, PlayStation 2, emulators starting up. And I'm going to show you proof that it has it. Wow, that's loud. I'm going to show you proof that... I'm going to show you proof that this works with uh, PS2 memory card. Sometimes if your game hangs, go ahead and restart the game. Let me just lower down the volume just a little bit here. 
Okay, cool. So I'm gonna say start. It's checking for the memory card. It sees it. I'm gonna create a new profile. I'm just gonna call this test real quick. Checking, checking, checking for the memory card. It saw it. Awesome. Save it. It's checking it. It's gonna save to it. And we're ready to have a lot of good times, basically. Okay, excellent. So now what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna go to arcade mode. I'm just gonna select a bunch of options here, just to get this started. I haven't tested many PS2 games, but um, the ones I've tried so far work pretty well. I can't guarantee that all compatibility is gonna be awesome for all your PS2 game collection, so all I can say is just rip your games, try it out, and see what happens. All right, so that is uh, the PS3 game tutorial today. If you guys have any nitpicky questions, leave a comment here on the YouTube page. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.